Gibbs, how was Mills' defense so good? This one was from Thines, but I saw it from about four to five different people. He was a player that was a little bit unexpected, who made a great run at the challenge. To me, his defense was so good because of three different things. Number one, Mills gets credit for creating the Nickel Blitz 2, the blitz you've faced online 10,000 times. A million times. Super popular, super tough, and really good against Gun Bunch. So, number one, he invented that. He has been using it all year long, so he's used to running it, used to adjusting to it, and he just did really well with it. So why? Three things. Number one, he had a really good draft. Great his draft. draft was amazing. Draft. He was good, but his draft on defense, when I saw it, I was like, wow, this guy's something to be reckoned with. Real good. Number two, he would do this thing where he would click onto the blitzer and dive at the quarterback's feet. And so you get in a little bit faster, and it would cause a lot of uh, panic. I saw a question you got you, about got you that. It got you there that that much quicker. The third thing Mills did, and RG called it out a lot in the broadcast, was he brought his safeties down quite mm -hmm. a bit in the box. So he was like constantly kind of bringing his safeties in there. Deep. So I felt like his run defense never like really suffered, because one of the things you can do to beat the Nickel Blitz, too, is run on it. But between the combination of having a really good team and just having your safeties down in a bit... Um, that's how he was so good running it. So, you know, go back, watch the Madden Challenge, study the tape on Mills. Obviously, he's been running that blitz since the start of the year. So I, I tried to thank him on the broadcast for facing it all year long, oh, but that's when, they, that's when my mic was on. And, okay, so get this, right? So when I and I sat down to interview him, I talked to him for 30 minutes, uh, and just this is the normal thing we do when we meet the players, right, to get some more context for them. The very first thing he said to me was, I was the inventor of So he, he did want the credit. He did, and then he showed me a picture from August 20th this past year of him in a conversation with someone, and they were like, wow, where'd you find this nickel blitz? And Because like, he had like 12 sacks in the game or something like that, and it was August 20th. So, tip the old ball cap to him. Tip the old... Well, he also... I, I, I don't have the details of whether or not he had it flipped, if he had auto... Uh, auto defensive flip on, but yes, he was 1,000% blitzing it from the bunch side. Yeah. And that helps because that means you have to block your tight end to really pick it up. Gotcha. Um, so that was bad. So he was saying was... it the other way. <laughs> right. Um, let me do this real quick, though. Go back. So just send your halfback out, right, on a route. So this is what he was doing. Like, this is the typical thing. You either sit there, you hover, or people would hover here, right? This was the yeah. move that people do. So you hover, and the pressure comes in, and he, he clicks on. He would click on. He like rolled out. out. Yeah, and he would dive at you. He'd dive at your feet and make it all types of awkward. And it gets there that much quicker. And have it get in there that much quicker, very important. So don't roll out like a, like a jerk this time. Thanks. Go. And then here, and he comes in. And then he, like, that was still too soon, but, like, that's kind of, like, what it was, right? Yeah. Because I dove at you, and I was never going to get you if I didn't dive like that. I, it would take a little, little bit longer. So... I actually saw Kerry Q do I think I saw Kerry Q doing it. I, like, I started towards the end of the tournament. I started seeing more people do it, yeah. which was interesting. So, uh, and actually, RG called out a really interesting point um, after the championship match with for Skimbo. Uh, he had called out that, uh, this is transitioning to, like, Nickel Blitz and Skimbo and Beast Mode Mac, that Beast Mode, or Skimbo, had only faced Nickel Blitz twice all tournament. Mm -hmm. One was versus Stick Work, and then one was versus Beast Mode. And if you remember... Against stick work, he got down like twenty-one to three or something, correct? Twenty-one six or yeah. whatever it was. So he got down big in that one against the nickel blitz. And then now looking back at it, you think, okay, it kind of makes sense. He only had what ten points in the championship game right. against uh, nickel blitz. So it kind of made sense. This, you know, Skimbo had a dominating offense the whole tournament. He looked really good. Didn't really look like anyone was gonna be able to beat him. No. And then he comes out, base where it just locks him up. He had. Forced him into bad throws. He had three interceptions, and yeah, went back to uh, maybe not lock on, up, but on the post. It, I mean, it's not lock up. It was when, more like when, when you hold Skimbo to, to what thir was it thirteen ten or sixteen thirteen? I think it was sixteen ten. Sixteen ten. Yeah. When you hold Skimbo to ten, for him, I mean, if I scored ten, that's a regular day, so you yeah. can't say locked up. But uh, that was pretty legit. So that is how Mills got it done at the Madden Challenge. Gibbs, what else from the Madden Challenge caught your eye? Like, what was some of the takeaways that you saw? As far as draft champions goes, obviously the next event will be salary cap. Do you feel like you'll have an easier time picking who will win ahead of time in salary cap versus draft champions? Or um, I think overall, I just it, it's redefining to me what makes a great Madden player, and it's like 
It's not the great. It's not the great scheme. It's not coming in surprise everybody with a new blitz. Like that's not what it's about anymore. And for me, it's just reconfirming now. Seeing classic to the bowl to the challenge. It's who manages the game properly. Like mm -hmm. like when you go back and watch Skimbo play. I think there was three straight games where he scored at the end of the half, yeah. like with like zero time. He had a huge, a couple huge plays down the so sideline. So that's like one of those things where that's a difference maker. You get free points out of that. That's absolutely phenomenal. Like that's right. or or someone that comes down and they turn it over. Like what's the classic way you see someone fall apart? You know, you, you, someone that's outmatched against somebody. They come down. They're down by. They let up a touchdown. Now they're down seven. It almost happened two minutes to go. Carry in the Mills game. Right. Like he was like it was like twenty one three and he had the ball before the half and I think he threw a pick to make it twenty eight three. Right. It's like kinda how it ended up happening for him. Mm -hmm. I've been in that situation online. It's like you just turned the ball over and now you need a now you really need a drive before the half. Like so you say you have two minutes left and you're down ten three. Mm -hmm. You make it seventeen three by like throwing a pick six, but now instead of having two minutes, you have like 40 seconds, and now you're like, man, now I really need points. And then you force something even dumber and give up a field goal, and then it, then you're down 17. Right. Now, now it's three scores, now it's half, and now the game's over. Yeah. So like you can lose a game at half instantly. Right. You can instantly lose a game at the half. Right. Because at, in the fourth quarter, people are paying attention to the clock, but in the second quarter, people might not. So there's more possessions to be had at that at that point in the game. Right. And I, I, th I just think overall, I think you, you found out that there's there's ways, guys had cute gimmick ways to attack soft squats downfield, um, you know, attack vertically. There's all the cute ways. But I think time and time again, I think you saw that cover two soft squats is a great defense. And I, and I think the thing that surprised me the most, you ready? People cannot score in the red zone. Yeah. I think Skimbo had, Skimbo had the best offense in the red zone by far. Um, and his little motion's out. But what I, I'm not seeing, you know, the plays that we use in the red zone. Right. I feel like we see a lot of success with those. I, I didn't see people throwing use those. those. I saw a couple people not the dragons, though. Not the dragons. They were throwing corners. Yeah, it's the dragon that you need. You need the dragon. It uh, wasn't in their playbooks. Yeah, and or? I'm also I was also really surprised. Maybe it wasn't in their playbooks. I was also really surprised you didn't see anyone do the old school books. Old school books is fantastic. No, somebody did. Someone did. One guy did. Okay. Um, I forget, but he was doing it on the off street match to the corner. It was pretty nice. Uh, he was relying on it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that was pretty much the big takeaway. <laughs> Correct. Have a McCaffrey. But I mean, with the cap being different, that could be you know something that would matter. Um, salary cap will change things for the last event. Dubby to me struggled in his playbook. Uh, but if you go back and watch it, I mean, he played Skimble in his first game. Right. That's going to be a tough game. That's real tough. Stickwork just ran the ball well. Stickwork, he played really well, though. Stickwork yep. as well. And AP then in the Joe off. Rice game, he was 0-2, so he was already out of it, and he lost by a point. And he had the game until the fourth. He right. just gave up that last drive. And, and Joe Rice turned out to get it done, so 